So, it is that time of year again. It is Christmas Eve, and just like last year, I find myself not having anything to do. But what I didn't have last year was a pilot license. So, today I'm going to become Santa. Logo. So the idea is that I'm going to go fly at around midnight today, and I'm going to take off and go over to a uh, practice area where there's nobody around and then fly a pattern in the sky that's in the shape of a uh, wrapped Christmas present. So I've more or less plotted out the uh, shape of kind of the uh, the present wrapping. I think it's going to be a box and then this is a ribbon that kind of goes around. Obviously when I actually fly this, this is not going to be that sharp, but I'm going to be doing kind of a wide turn to make the bow shape. So we basically want to start from the airport and then go and try to draw this shape as efficiently as possible. And I know there's probably a mathematically most efficient way to do it, but what I'm going to do is just go draw most of the square first, and then once we get to this point, turn left for the uh, ascending part of the ribbon, and then go do the bow shape, and then the descending part of the ribbon, and then turn left over here to complete that square, and then head back to the airport. And uh, each of those straight legs are almost exactly 7 miles, which takes around uh, 3 to 4 minutes to fly. And that would give me some time after each turn to kind of um, like see if everything's working, make any correction if necessary before the next turn. So that's about the size that I made this uh, present. And here's that same flight plan on the bigger screen. It's supposed to take around 55 minutes overall. I'm actually flying slower than I usually would. Anytime I'm get, taking a corner, I'll actually slow down to around 70 knots so that the turn can look a little bit sharper while, when you zoom out. And here I actually have a uh, simulation of the GPS system and the autopilot in the plane that is kind of running the route at this speed. And so if I zoom in over here, you can actually see here's what the calculated um, curve is if I were to make these turns at a speed of 70 knots. So based on what I'm seeing here, as long as I do around 70 knots, this shape is going to be mostly preserved. And also the estimated um, time to destination also looks about correct. So I should be able to put this exact flight plan in the exact same way into the uh, GPS panel in the airplane and it should just fly this whole thing on autopilot and I can sit back and enjoy the view a little bit. And here I'm just checking the profile view to see, um, I'm planning to fly this at 2,500 feet and it doesn't look like there's gonna be much obstacles in the area that I'm trying to fly, so that's pretty good. Now the final concern that I have is you see all these uh, waypoints here? So I'm gonna have to put these one by one manually into the uh, GPS panel in the plane, which might take a while and it might, it, it took around 15 minutes when I did it here. And um, that's 15 minutes with the engine running. So like, that's like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 hours. So I'm gonna be paying for that. But the plane that I chose has the uh, NXI version of this panel, which means that I should be able to connect for flight to the panel over Bluetooth and just send over the flight plan directly. And that's what I'm going to try to do, and if it doesn't work, I'll put it in manually. But hopefully it works so that I can save some money. And the plane that I chose for this job is 6-4 Tango Zulu, which is a Piper Warrior. And the reason I chose it is because it has the nicer Garmin Autopilot that is a little bit more responsive than the, uh, the Autopilot on the 172s. So having a good Autopilot, I think, would be key to um, getting this to work. Also, just in case you're concerned that I'm flying so late and that I might be fatigued or something, I woke up at 3 p.m. this afternoon, which means that midnight for me is like 6 p.m. So, it's good. What you doing? What you doing? And in terms of traffic avoidance, I think today there shouldn't be that many people flying around, especially around midnight. So I'm hoping that there won't be much traffic, but if it turns out that there is a bunch of traffic for whatever reason around this area, I'm going to talk to uh, Fayetteville and have them keep an eye on me. Right, so everything's done now. I think we have a good plan here. I'm going to head to the airport. And I'm also putting on this uh, slightly more festive red sweater here. When I got to the flying club, there was a bunch of fog hanging over the airport. 
and that was only temporary. After about an hour of waiting, the fog went away, and I clicked on the runway lights to make sure that I can see all the way down the runway and that I could see the stars. And after I made sure that the weather is good, I continued with my pre-flight. So I'm checking all the exterior lights right now, and I think I'm gonna put a. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep all those lights on, you know, since it's Christmas and all. All right, so I just got done with the pre-flight and I'm about to start the plane. And as you can see here, I have my red headlamp because I'm supposed to be, I guess, Rudolph in this situation. But also because red light can preserve my night vision while still letting me see the buttons and stuff. All right, circuit breakers are all in. Let's put the key in. Fuel selector is on the right tank. Throttle open about half an inch. Wow, somebody made this really tight. Car heat is off. Mixture full rich. And master switch is now on, beacon on. The electric fuel pump is now coming on and getting ready to start. And engine has been started. All right, all my checks are complete. I'm going to start taxiing to the runway to do the rest of the run up. All right, departure briefing is complete and we are good to go. And make sure it's good, fuel pump is on. Rolling side traffic, Warrior 6 Pro Tango Zulu, departing runway 3 and will be departing over midfield to the southwest. Rolling Zach. All right, everything looks good. Instruments are in the green. And airspeed is alive. A good acceleration. Climb at 80 knots. Trim down a little bit. Alright, so, so now I'm just turning left onto course and still keeping this climb going. Instruments are all still looking good. Alright, so looking at the GPS here and here, we're about halfway to our first waypoint and we're gonna see uh, so I'm gonna get ready to slow things down and we can start applying this pattern so what I did here was that I actually made all of these waypoints corresponding to these coordinates here and then I put them all in order to the flight plan and this is what it looks like and so it's just flying this in sequence and I think once we get to once we get to around over here you see how like the curve it's drawing is not exactly what I want, so I'm actually going to start hand flying it using a uh, well, not hand fly, hand fly, but I'm going to start using heading mode and have it go outbound more and then turn back and then outbound more and then turn back and then intercept the waypoint number 10 and then continue on the nav mode autopilot. That's going to give me a pretty good box shape. And then once I get back here, they're uh, home free basically. And I also have my uh, Stratus here so that if all of these instruments fail, I can use my iPad here as a uh, backup instruments panel. So that's another redundancy for me right here. And we have made our first corner and it actually looks pretty good. Um, this was crossed at around 80 knots. Next time I'm going to slow down earlier so we can actually do 70 and it should be an even sharper turn. So I'm pretty happy with this right now. All right, we're getting ready for the next turn, and we're just about 80 and slowing down. So once the turn begins, we should be around 70 because of the increased uh, angle of attack during the bank. 36, and here comes the turn, and I'm going to help it with the rudder. And... There we are, that's a pretty good... So far, so good. And here's speed going down a little bit, so compensate. 
with throttle. And now we're out of the turn, so we're going to accelerate. And that looks pretty good. And also, as expected, there is absolutely no traffic in this area. Nobody's out flying. Now we're getting to a rather critical phase of um, this plan here, which is this uh, small corner that's the beginning of the uh, part of the ribbon that's on the box. So let's see how well we can do this. And the play is starting to pitch up to compensate for the turn. And here comes the turn. Helping it out with the rudder. Keeping the airspeed. Okay, this is good. This is more than good enough for what I want to do. And now that we're going this way, and we're about to get to here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this here around 45 degrees that way. And then, once, once we get to this point, I'm going to go to heading mode and fly the plane basically with the uh, heading knob in order to create the nice little bow. And here it is. It says right turn in eight seconds. So once it gets down to about one, I'm going to hit heading mode. And immediately the plane is going to turn right to my pre-selected heading. There we go. And now you see we're tracking a nice little path here. I'm gonna let it go out till it passes this waypoint and then turn it back around like this. And then once it gets over here, I'm going to turn right again and then do that. And then I'm gonna come back here to the next waypoint is waypoint, I believe, number 10. All right, so we're about here now. So I'm gonna slowly start turning us left. A few degrees at a time. Want it to be like a nice wide little circle. All right, this is probably good. If I, let me see here. So if I drew a straight line like this, yeah, that seems about right. And now I'm getting for the next turn, which is going to be a fairly sharp turn. So once it gets to about intersecting here, I'm going to change this knob immediately to a heading off around, uh, let's see here, maybe to a heading of 321 magnetic. So I'm going to start doing that in a second. Ready? Get set and go. And this should be a sharp turn that I am helping out with the autopilot. And we can see this turn coming in here. And here's a rollout. Maybe I'll turn it a little bit more this way. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. All right, we're almost here. So let's start turning left. And the idea is that I'm going to keep it turning left up to a certain point. And then after I'm almost lined up, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to refresh the uh, direct on that GPS and it's going to take us straight to the uh, next waypoint. And this is good enough. So at this point, I'm going to go direct, waypoint 10, activate. And now it's going to follow this line back here and put this on nav. So now it's going to follow this line back to our waypoint. So now we're, we're basically home free. We just go straight here, here, and then here, and then we can start going back. And also, you see how this corner kind of got cut here? What I'm going to do is that once we get here, 
I'm actually gonna gonna make it go in this direction for a little bit longer, and then so go like this, and then turn off here, so to square off this uh, this corner. All right, I think that little uh, part got squared off pretty well, and we have a pretty nice looking uh, present here. So uh, I had it set to um, to go here and then go up a little bit, and then at that point I'm gonna interrupt it and um, have it go uh, start heading back. And I'm going to set up an approach for heading back. I've actually already set it up in there. But I am going to do an ILS runway 3 with the uh, ICTO initial approach fix. So it's going to go bring us over here and then that way. So I'm actually going to add this to the route. So this is what's going to happen. It's going to go here, and then like that. Well, it's going to come up here and then go here, and then go there. All right, and we are almost squared off here. Just a little bit more. All right, I think we're done. Like, I'm pretty happy with this. So let's see, where is this? This is Ikto. So I'm going to direct Ikto. Actually, you know what? I'm going to direct Hedy, just the final approach fix. And it's going to start taking us there immediately. And the altitude at Hedy is going to be 2,100 feet. So setting my altitude select. 2,100 feet. Wow, this plane just way overshot the uh, <laughs> just way overshot the course. But that's fine. That sometimes happens. Come on, you can get there eventually. This uh, this autopilot is really struggling with capturing this course. You know what? <sighs> All right, I'm gonna help it out manually. There we go. That wasn't so hard, was it? All right, now calm down. And autopilot comes back on. That was funny, I made a little squiggle thing here. Anyway, so now we're directing Hedy. Our next altitude is 2100, so I'm gonna do vertical speed mode and with a uh, minus 500 feet per minute descent. I am almost at Hedy, so I am going to uh, set it to heading mode to hold this heading and go ahead and activate the approach. Yep, here we are activated, and I am at the correct altitude, which is 2100. This is also, um, I'm not on an IFR flight plan, I, um, I'm just flying the approach, so which is why I'm not talking to anybody. All right, the localizer is about to be alive, and once it is, I'm going to activate approach mode. Here comes approach mode. This way the autopilot will, will automatically start following the localizer once it's intercepted. So, runway is in sight. Yep, here's the left turn to intercept the localizer. And the glide slope dot is also alive. Raleigh exec traffic, Warrior 64 Tangle Zulu is on a five mile final ILS runway three. Raleigh exec. The dot is in the middle, both dots are in the, in the middle. I see the runway right ahead of me. I'm going to do my before landing checklist. Seat and seat belt, seat backs, fuel selector, fuel pump, mixture, and no carb heat, and flaps. I am going to start the first notch very slowly. There's first notch of flaps, and there's the little float here. Our minimums here is gonna be 447 feet. And that's 500 above minimums. Rally exact traffic, Warrior 64 Tango Zulu, short final ILS runway 3, Rally exact. Further reduce the throttle. Pump the brakes a few times to make sure we got brakes. And I'm going to go ahead and disengage autopilot here. And go to two notches of flaps. I swear, you cannot find a better day to fly. This is a great day to fly. Alright, here comes the runway. Throttle back. And there's touchdown. A little firm, that's pretty good. Flaps up, aerodynamic braking. It didn't make Alpha 2, so... I'll increase my speed so I can get to Alpha 3 faster. Fuel pump can come off. 
lights, landing taxi lights can stay on for now. And here comes Alpha 3. Bravo exec, Icon 951 Bravo Alpha, lining up runway 3, Bravo exec. And rally exec traffic, uh, Warrior 6 for Tango Zulu is clear of the active and taxing back to ramp. Merry Christmas. All right, off the line, we have after landing checklist. Flaps are retracted. Oh, I actually spelled flaps wrong here. Huh. Carpet is off, it is off. Strobe landing lights off. I'm gonna throw the strobes off, but I'm gonna keep the landing lights on. Uh, trim is set for takeoff, fuel pump off. Mixture lean and flight plan close. All right, time to taxi. So I think this went exactly how I thought it would, which is great. Could not have gone better. And here's my parking spot. All right, I'll 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 get out and straighten it out later, but this is good enough. All right, shut down checklist. Throttle back to 1,000, radio off. And everything else off. Throttle full aft, magnetos off and lights are off and here's emac light is off and master switch off and we're done yay now just gotta take everything off take this mustn't forget about this and headphones All right, so it is the day after, so Christmas Day. I um, pretty much went straight to sleep after I came back last night because it was like 3 a.m. But I'm looking back at the GPS track lock here and it really looks good. Like, it looks like a present, there's no mistaking it. And also on the on FlightAware, if you look at it on FlightAware, um, the, uh, the shape on there is a little bit weird. I think it's because of how the airplane is reporting at the uh, position, like how the transponder is reporting the position versus how the GPS is um, is capturing it. So I think the GPS one is the more accurate one. But yeah, the main reason I did that was just to have some fun and um, the shape turned out great. And I also had all the lights on the plane kind of all lit up. So if, I'm pretty sure if like a kid on the ground looked up into the sky and saw the plane, they, they, they wouldn't be hard pressed to say it was, I don't know, Santa or something because you know, the wingtip lights are red and green and everything. So, yeah, I think I succeeded in spreading some holiday cheer and just a tiny bit of carbon monoxide in the atmosphere. But that's another story.